Hello STEM enthusiasts and welcome to the first edition of the Scientix TV. I'm delighted to kick off the pilot of something we have been actually dreaming about for years, a Scientix TV program. But why a Scientix TV? What is it and what for? Scientix TV is our way to thank all those teachers seeking to improve STEM education every day. Those who have been working tirelessly during a global pandemic, ensuring high quality teaching despite difficult conditions. Whatever level you teach, no matter what subject, Scientix TV is for you. Our idea is to create a place of encounter, a place to keep growing our community of STEM education enthusiasts, where to spread our love for STEM, to share, to learn, and most importantly, to have a good time. Each month, the program will cover a different STEM topic, ranging from STEM careers to artificial intelligence or any other topic you would like us to address. Each show will run for about 20 minutes and will include interviews, roundtables, competitions, and many activities related to STEM education. Today's topic will be the 2022 STEM Discovery Campaign, one of the big, biggest STEM campaigns worldwide, which is run by Scientix every year in collaboration with many other projects, organizations, and schools. We're gonna give you a brief overview of the campaign and reflect on its achievements. And uh, you'll meet two teachers who have contributed to making STEM accessible for all, which is the theme of this year's campaign. And we are, we are also joined by an audience of educators today. Now let's get started. For this, let me introduce you to today's show co-anchor Bjorn Bachmann, who has coordinated the 2022 STEM Discovery Campaign. Bjorn, can you tell us more about the campaign? Sure, I can. So, so the, the STEM Discovery, Discovery campaign, campaign celebrates teachers, schools, libraries, projects, and other organizations who promote the teaching and learning of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. As every year, the campaign ran from February to the end of April. Now, this year's theme was STEM for all. That motto stands for our belief that every child everywhere should have access to quality STEM education. Of course, teachers play the ultimate role in making this vision come true. It's clear that if we provide teachers with solid research, administrative backing, and all important industry support, they can inspire students to dream about STEM careers. So one way the campaign celebrates teachers is by putting their activities on a map. It's always a pleasure to see teachers' passion for STEM. In a moment, our colleague Isidora will show you what that looks like concretely. But first, let's see how much our audience of experienced teachers knows about the campaign. We're going to show you a series of slides with questions, and our teachers in the audience will have 20 seconds to guess the right answer for each, for each question. So are you ready? Let's start. Now, with the first question here, in which year did the first STEM discovery campaign take place? Was it either in 1997, in 2019, in 2010, or was it in 2016? You have still seven seconds to answer, and I see the answers coming in. Here we have the results, and the correct answer is indeed 2016. Now, let's see who got this one right, and let's have a look at the scoreboard. We see Joanne is leading, very good. And uh, we have three more questions to go, so let's go to the next one. The next question is, what is the theme of this year's campaign? Was it A, Discover STEM? Was it B, Innovative Trends in Education? Was it STEM for All? Or was it Sustainability and Citizenship? Again, we see the answers coming in. You still have some time if you haven't made up your mind. And in three seconds, we will see the results. Here we go. The correct answer is STEM for all. And indeed, most of you got this right. Let's see if anything changed on the scoreboard here. So now we see Anita has caught up with 1,895 points. And let's go to the next question. The next question is, how many schools were involved in the 2022 STEM Discovery Campaign? Was it A, 489, 
was it B, 2022, was it C, 3,124, or D, 7,799? And here everyone has replied already. The correct answer is indeed an amazing number of 7,799. And let's have a look if anything changed on the scoreboard here. We see Panagiota is on fire with three correct answers in a row, but still Anita is leading the scoreboard. So let's see if this changes in the last and the fourth question here. And this question is how many activities were registered during this year's campaign? Was it 1,943 or was it B, 547? C, 1,355, and you're already ahead of me here. And indeed, the correct answer is 1,355. Now, who won this quiz? Let's have a look at the podium. The third place goes to Panagiota. Second place is... We're waiting for the results. It's Dora. And the first place goes to Anita. So congratulations, Anita, for winning the first ever Scientix TV quiz. We will be sending you a Scientix backpack. And let's have a look now at the past and present STEM discovery campaigns. Easy, Dora. Thank you, Bjorn. And hello, everyone. Uh, I will tell you more how the STEM discovery campaign progressed over the past six years. You can see in the map, in the loop, going how it went from 2017 to 2022. And you will see that each pin of this map represents people who deeply care about STEM education. Each pin is an activity or an event or a workshop that they organized or participated in during the campaign. It can be a cool lesson they created for their students, or it can be just a webinar that they took part in. Whatever it is, these people made an extra effort and shared these activities with the world so others can learn from their experiences. When we first started, the campaign lasted just one week and we showcased around 100 activities from 30 schools around Europe. So far, we, it grew and it grew. And in 2021, we had more than 2,000 activities. Of course, we are trying to beat that record this year and we're on a good path for it. Also, as you can see on these maps, that we are getting submissions from all over the world, from many different countries. So teachers east, south and west of Europe are organizing activities. They're participating in activities all over the place and they are organizing in places such as Turkey, Nigeria, India, Brazil, Jordan. And of course, we have our most remote activity taking place in um, island of Pompeii in Micronesia out in the Pacific Ocean. On top of that, each year we organize several competitions for our participants. And this year we had 12 competitions where teachers, schools and students could win valuable prizes. And these 12 competitions attracted more than 670 entries this year, which is a grand success. And we're looking forward to see how it all look at the end of the campaign. Bjorn, back to you. Thanks a lot, Isidora, for this update. Now, let's hear from two teachers who put their names on the map this year. It's my pleasure to introduce you to our first guest, Anita Simats. Anita is a Scientix ambassador and mathematics teacher in a lower secondary school in Croatia. Anita, welcome to Scientix TV. How are you doing today? I'm doing fine. Thank you, Bjorn. Um, it's a great pleasure to be with you here today on the pilot episode. And it's great to have you. Thanks a lot. So, Anita, you wrote an article for the STEM Discovery Campaign blog that caught our attention. Because in that article, you explain how you and your fellow ambassadors promote scientists to teachers in Croatia. Could you give us a quick summary of your article for the viewers who haven't read it? Of course. Um... The community of STEM practitioners and enthusiasts who love Scientix has been steadily growing. But as all teachers know, there's always room for some kind of improvement. An idea was born by a colleague of mine who is a Scientix ambassador. And um, we came up with a plan, the six of us, 
to devise a set of uh, live events, webinars, where we would disseminate and promote scientix to the entire teaching community in Croatia. So it was quite an ambitious plan, but um, as you know, teachers are all very brave and always up for a challenge. And so in November, we um, decided to start these events. Um, Scientix allowed us to use their online meeting room and then every first Wednesday of the month was dedicated to a specific topic of Scientix. The last webinar is actually being held next week, so that's the last in this series. And so far, hundreds and hundreds of teachers have participated and we've just been really overwhelmed by the response. And we really believe that we've managed to um, motivate and inspire hundreds and hundreds of teachers in Croatia. Wow, that's uh, really impressive. And it's actually a perfect example of STEM for all. I think it's clear to us and the audience that you are an expert in getting teachers excited about STEM. So how can we transfer this enthusiasm to our students or how can we make them as passionate about STEM as we are? Well, I believe if your students see that uh, you as a teacher are passionate about a topic, then this in turn will motivate them. So it's important uh, to believe in what you teach, in, in believe in the topic, in, in the STEM area that um, you teach to your uh, pupils, because children cannot be fooled um, if you are able to uh, project that enthusiasm and positive energy and show them how they can in turn become involved and also make a difference, then this will definitely encourage all children to uh, embrace STEM. Um, I organize STEM days for my students and for the entire school and we try to get as many organizations from the local community and beyond involved so that children can not only hear about STEM from their teachers, but really experience it um, for themselves. Okay, these are really good tips. Thank you so much for sharing. And how has being a Scientix ambassador impacted your teaching? Well, I truly believe that Scientix has opened many doors and enabled me to improve my teaching, improve the way I view the world. I often say that I see the world through STEM glasses. So everywhere I turn, I see something that can be connected to STEM. And Scientix, with all its wealth of resources, the learning scenarios, the projects, and just really meeting and interacting with colleagues uh, on, on a daily basis, to be honest, really helps me and inspires me. This cooperation of the thousands of, of teachers who uh, use the Scientix repository and all their resources is, is phenomenal. Um, my teaching before Scientix seems very much like a distant memory. Excellent. I'm very happy to hear that Scientix can create such bonds between teachers coming from different backgrounds and places. And in fact, you wrote in your post that teachers are nothing if not brave and always ready for a challenge. I think this is certainly true for you and your colleagues. Now, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, Bjorn. Thank you very much, Anita, for sharing your experiences with us. It's actually very impressive always to hear teachers like you. And we're, we're going to hear from a teacher who has organized an activity to encourage students to choose a STEM career. Alvaro Molina is a science teacher in Cordoba, Spain, and he invited a plant ecologist into his classroom to tell the students about his research and his profession. Hello, Alvaro, and thank you for being yeah. with us today. Hello, thank you for giving me the opportunity to stay here with all of you. Now, how did you get the idea for this activity and uh, how difficult was it to find a STEM professional willing to come to your classroom? Uh, well, um, uh, the idea of organizing this kind of activity uh, came from talking with my student. During this school year, we talked several times about uh, what a researcher normally do in their daily work and how to get uh, to this STEM career. Um, also, um, we talk about several topics, uh, but specifically, uh, they asked me about what normally do a, a researcher in biology. 
So I think it's good. Uh, there will a uh, really good opportunity to invite a, a researcher in biology in order to explain us what they normally do, how to get this work, and this personal experience. And the second question, um, finding uh, this STEM professional was not uh, very difficult because uh, when I organize this kind of activity, um, I try to work with uh, STEM professionals so close to me, who are so close to me. So as we normally work in an um, academic context, we meet a lot of people who can help us in this kind of situation. I contact with a biology who is researching in, in, a, in a university of Madrid um, the, okay, the, the topic that is we researching right now in phylogenesis is what it was a bit more casual, but it's good, uh, really opportun a good opportunity to relate uh, the importance of keeping alive the research in several topics, for example, in this situation in biology, uh, to improve our daily life because he connected um, a research of biology uh, with the with, uh, with something that's, uh, that is really close for our students, that that's what we normally do for the COVID-19. And this point was really, really interesting. Yeah, you actually said that it was the students' ideas uh, to actually bring them. So how did the students react to his visit? Did any of them comment about it afterward? Um, well, uh, the students respond for this time very well. Um, I know that because uh, after the time, the, the researcher told me that he was really impressed with the reaction of the student listening, uh, uh, listening really interesting, and uh, yeah, had his interest the in the child, the experience, and they and, and also they make an interesting question. For example, they they asked him about his first research that it was about, and also about the research he is carrying out right now. And of course, <laughs> as normally, uh, they also ask about several topics of the of his daily life. For example, the salary of our researchers. Um, we're talking about that <laughs> in a few minutes, and we conclude that it's important that a researcher should earn more money here in Spain. <laughs> we need to do that. <laughs> So, so the students seem to really appreciate hearing from someone in the field and hearing real answers, basically. Why do you think it's so necessary to connect STEM jobs to what happens in the classroom? Yes, I think it's really important because it um, gives the opportunity to our students uh, meet uh, STEM careers, STEM opportunity. It's uh, so really powerful because it's a really uh, direct connection because what they are working in the classroom and, and the daily life possibilities, you know. Uh, when I organize this kind of activity, I normally work with the 15, 16 years old student. And this kind of talk, this kind of activities uh, give them the opportunity to learn more about STEM uh, profession, STEM opportunity. And it's a good opportunity to, to help them in order to choose the properly um, educational program that they normally should uh, choose uh, during the last year of secondary education also in order to give them ideas for what to study in the university, of course. So I think it's really, really important to have a contact with STEM career during the last year of the secondary education. Interesting. So, so I guess that means that you will be inviting other STEM professionals to your school in the future? Yes, in two weeks. <laughs> okay, in two weeks. Two weeks. <laughs> During May, uh, because um, a few weeks ago, uh, we have had the opportunity to, to, to be in a workshop of the University of Córdoba, explaining the different grades uh, that could be studied in this university. And many students uh, told me and showed me interest about the, about the study in veterinary. So I have contact with a girl who has finished uh, the studies in veterinary. She is right now veterinarian, and she accepted to, to explain us um, how to get how to start now with these studies, and how is the degree, how is this grade, sorry, and the different staying up, the different opportunities after finishing these studies. So in two weeks, we are preparing the next visit of a STEM professional because many students think that a veterinary. It's just working in a pet clinic, but this girl is uh, tell us about all the possibilities of uh, veterinary. Yes, yeah, so yes, we have to, to do this kind of thing as much as possible. 
Very, very, very nice. Uh, we actually have a question from the audience. Uh, Jacques is asking, did your students have trouble understanding the presentation by the professional researcher? Maybe because he was too advanced. Mm, not really. And not really because I contact with this, with the researchers, uh, with many times, uh, maybe two months before the talk. And she has a lot of time uh, to prepare the activity. Uh, I thank a lot uh, um, this effort because he, I know he spent many time preparing a, a talk that will be so close for the children with not technical work. We don't need a technical work with a 15, 16 years old student. We need their personal experience and she prepared a 45 minutes talk, uh, really close, really nice. Um, the student understand everything very, very good. Yeah. So thank, thank you, Alvaro, very much for coming today. We actually want to remind teachers that there is another source of support out there, and that's industry. Now, many companies need more STEM workers, and therefore many of them offer support to schools and teachers. One such company is IBM. Now, Ivana Kovac, the STEM Alliance coordinator, is joining us today as well to tell us a little bit about how IBM supports teachers during the 2022 STEM Discovery campaign. Hi, Ivana. Hello, Agena. Yes, that's correct. IBM is organizing a competition in collaboration with the STEM Alliance, and the teachers who participate have a chance to win 500 euros for their classroom. They should check out the IBM Skills Build platform, where they will find very useful online resources for their students. For this competition, teachers are asked to come up with a simple lesson plan that shows how these IBM resources can be integrated into a STEM class. The central idea of this competition is to make children aware of the links between their school topics and potential STEM careers, as well as the professional skills that are necessary to pursue them. The best lesson plans will not only be published as examples of good practice, but also the first three winners will be rewarded with a 500 euro gift vouchers for STEM equipment for their classrooms. You still have time until the 31st of May to submit your lesson plan. And if you need any further guidance, we will have a webinar with IBM next Friday, 6th of May. Check it out. Thank you very, very much, Ivana, for that glance at an industry partnership. And big thanks to IBM for helping teachers and students, students across Europe. Now, we are going to close each episode of Scientix TV with a peek inside a classroom or giving you a front row seat to a science experiment. For this, we are connecting again with Isidora, our experiments coordinator. and. Uh, where are you right now, Isidora? Are you actually in the kitchen? Is that where you are? Well, yeah, but that's the best place to do your experiments without making a mess everyone else. So today I am going to show you how to make an elephant toothpaste. It's a very easy but very fun experiment that you can do with your students pretty much at any age. So what we will need to have, it's a bit more complicated than a normal uh, out of your house type of thing, but you need to have uh, hydrogen peroxide, 3% one is fine, uh, dish detergent, a bit of food coloring, uh, the dry yeast, and of course, some warm water, of course, some spoons for mixing all of that in. So we will start with putting hydrogen peroxide, it's the one that you use for cuts and breaks, so it's a very normal one type. We pour it into our, we pour half a cup into our water bottle. Oops. Well, it spilled a bit from outside, so we'll add more. You can try with different uh, ratios of water and um, hydrogen peroxide, so you will see what kind of reactions you get. Then, we will add just one or two drops of any dish detergent. Voila. And a few drops of colored dye, uh, food dye. So we actually color the paste and we can see the reaction itself. But make sure that when you're mixing it, you don't create bubbles. 
So, because then the experiment won't work very well. We need one spoon of, one small uh, teaspoon of yeast, put it into a small glass, add two spoons of warm water, one, two, you mix it, if, if it becomes lumpy, it's not a problem, just mix it a little bit. Clean your spoon and maybe need to add a bit more water. And you pour the mixture inside of this bottle and see what happens afterwards. If you watch very carefully, you will see that our bottle is started to fill up. And if we did correctly, it will overflow our bottle. It's a bit slow and you can do it similarly with uh, uh, Mentos and soda, but it won't be as exciting as this one. What happens here is that hydrogen peroxide, it's made out of hydrogen and water and it breaks down very slowly so yeast here works as a catalyst as an as a chemical that fastens some um, chemical reactions so as we see here our paste is starting to go up so voila and this means that if we put yeast with hydrogen peroxide it will rapidly break down into water and it will break into water and put oxygen back into it gas state and it will push it out. And that's why we put the dye in order to see it, how the oxygen is going out of our bottle. But don't try to wash your teeth with it. Of course, you will probably fall out. <laughs> and that's it for me. I hope this was fun for you as it, as it was for me as well. Back to you guys. That was really cool. It <laughs> was great for chemistry and physics classes and also for, well, Saturday afternoon, I guess. So. so anyway, thank you very much, Isidora. And that's all the time we have today. I hope you had as much fun watching this first episode of Scientix TV as we had making it. We want to bring you new episodes each month to highlight developments in our fields, share resources, or just laugh together. If there is a topic you would like, us, like to see covered, please let us know, share your ideas and impressions of our, first, uh, of, of our first pilot on social media using the hashtag, hashtag ScientixTV. We want to hear your views. Now, special thanks to Scientix TV pedagogical advisor, John Mercade, as well as the live audience of today. So we had Panagio Dyergiri, we had Selchuk Yusuf Arslan, and we had John Hale uh, for su supporting us today. Of course, thanks again to Anita and Alvaro, and as well for, to IBM for helping us uh, with the STEM Alliance. Now, tune in again next month. Enjoy the spring weather and all the best from your Scientix team. Thank you and goodbye.